Well, good evening, folks, and uh, I hope that you have been having or have had a, a, a nice Good Friday. We usually meet together here in church for our Good Friday service, and it is so uh, odd, it's so difficult this Easter that we're not able to meet together face to face. Uh, of course, we are in a very unusual situation at this time, and of course, part of our Good Friday service as we would love to be sharing communion together as well. And I can't wait, as I'm sure you can't wait either for us to be able to meet together again in this church. And I hope very soon after we're able to meet together, we will be able to share the Lord's Supper together uh, as a church family. So this evening I want us to read just a verse or two from John chapter 19. John chapter 19 and reading from verse 28. Later, knowing that all was now completed, and so that scripture would be fulfilled, Jesus said, I am thirsty. A jar of wine vinegar was there, so they soaked a sponge in it, put the sponge on the stalk of a hyssop plant, and lifted it up to Jesus' lips. When he had received the drink, Jesus said, is finished. With that he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Father God, thank you that this Good Friday we celebrate the sacrifice of Jesus for our sin. Holy Spirit, come and speak to us now. Bring us comfort in this dark hour. Strengthen our hearts and help us to hear your word so that we can receive the truth that it contains. In Jesus' name, Amen. So as we look at uh, this passage for today, it is finished. And I want us first to, to think about the great suffering that Jesus endured for us. He was beaten he was battered, he was bruised and bleeding. He hung there on that cross for you and for me. The Bible tells us that his back was scourged like a ploughed field. His face was marred more than any man. He was spat on, he was cursed. Many of us have watched uh, the movie Passion of the Christ by Mel Gibson. A graphic movie, something that's certainly not for the faint-hearted, something that, that's hard to watch, but certainly in our lifetime worth watching at least once because it brings home the gruesome reality of crucifixion and what our Saviour Jesus went through for us. He was rejected and he was betrayed by those he loved. He died for us and yet he freely chose this. So that you and I might live in freedom. He died for us. So that we might die to sin and to slavery. And instead we might truly live. And so many of us cry. What's God doing about suffering at this time? Isaiah tells us he was pierced for our iniquities. He was crushed for our transgressions. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him. And by his stripes we are healed. But it goes on to say, we all like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his and her own way. See, we, we love to point the finger. We love to blame someone and maybe even we love to blame God at such a time as this. Why God? Why? But maybe as we're pointing the finger at others, pointing the finger at God, we need to take note of the three fingers pointing back at us. Why have we been so selfish? Why has each, every one of us turned away from God? There's sin in the world because I'm a sinner. And because each one of us are sinners. 
and when we give sin free reign in our lives and in our world, then the consequences is a world where there is every kind of darkness. But Good Friday tells us that God cares about our suffering. Oh, what suffering Jesus endured for us. Secondly, what a sacrifice. As we read on in this passage, it says, Jesus, knowing that all was now completed and so scripture would be fulfilled, Jesus said, I am thirsty. And those who were, were watching and listening to Jesus, those who were on the scene, they said, someone dipped a sponge in, in some vinegar and, and put it to Jesus' lips, trying to numb the pain, trying to think of his natural uh, pain, his natural thirst that he would have had. And no doubt Jesus was thirsty. No doubt he was in great suffering at this time. But I believe uh, that the Bible tells us that Jesus was not crying out, I thirst because of any natural uh, desire for a drink that he had. But rather, uh, it was a spiritual thirst. He was thirsting for his God, his Father. As in the words of Psalm 42, as the deer pants for the water, so my soul longs after you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. Where can I go and meet with God? Or likewise in Psalm 63, O oh God, my God, earnestly I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My body longs for you. In a dry and weary land where there is no water. And the commentator J. Ramsey Michaels has pointed out, surely this is a spiritual thirst. It is to these passages that Jesus is alluding. Now that Jesus had completed everything, now that he'd finished the race, his long was to be reunited with his father. He had taken the punishment for sin and we're told that as he lay there suffering on that cross or hung there suffering on the cross, that even God the father himself turned his back on him so that Jesus cried, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And there, when it was finished, Jesus longed for the presence of the Father again. But I wonder even more than that, the longing of separation, the sacrifice that Jesus made. 33 years he had lived upon this earth. But for those 33 years, he had been away from the glories of heaven. Yes, while Jesus lived on this earth, we know that he had a perfect relationship with the Heavenly Father. That he had unbroken communion with him, that he talked with him morning and night. Many nights he would have spent up the mountains communing and in, a, in full relationship with his Father. That relationship was never broken by any sin. But yet still there was a separation. For while Jesus was in this earthly uh, body, he was away from the glories of heaven. Jesus who was there at the beginning of the world. Who was the word through which all things were created. Jesus who is the wisdom and splendor of the father. Sitting at his right hand. All this he sacrificed to come and save us. And I complain that I'm missing my family at this time. We think of the great sacrifices that many are making uh, right now. We rightly commend and we applaud those who are putting themselves at risk for us. And of course, especially the NHS, NHS staff at this time. They are our heroes at this moment. But they are not our saviour. Our blessed saviour gave up his throne in heaven. To save us. He suffered horribly. The cruelest form of execution. Known to man. And Hebrews says. He did this for the joy. 
of being able to save us. What a sacrifice. So what suffering? What sacrifice? And finally I think of uh, Jesus' final words on that first Good Friday. It is finished. It is completed. It is fulfilled. Or it is accomplished. Because the word can have all that range of meanings. Jesus said, I have finished everything that I came for. All that the Father has asked of me and sent me to do, it's finished. The finished work of Christ on the cross. I have paid everything. Full payment has been completed for every sin, every trespass. Everyone who falls short of the glory of God, full payment has been made. The scriptures have been fulfilled. The Old Testament law and sacrifice has sought for a way that weak, sinful people could be accepted and forgiven by God. And that they could enjoy the blessings of a relationship with him. But no matter how hard people tried, they could never live it out or stay faithful to God. Jesus fulfilled every requirement of the law. His life and death was the one complete, final and perfect sacrifice that fulfilled all the requirements. So that by clinging onto Jesus in faith, we will be accepted forever. So Jesus' final words were a cry of victory. Victory has been accomplished. I have won. And sin has been defeated. It was because of sin that death and disease and hunger and addiction and hatred and depression and every kind of evil come into our world. And so if Jesus' death accomplished victory over the root cause, over sin, then what more victory over the mere symptoms of the problem. Jesus said, what is easier to say to the lame man, your sins are forgiven, or arise, get up and walk. And then he bade the lame man to get up and walk, to prove that he had power to heal the sick, and that he also had power to forgive sins. And so while Jesus walked on earth, before Jesus came to the cross, he was able to heal the sick. He was able to feed the 5,000. Even raise the dead. All this he did while he walked on earth. Then how much more is possible now that it is finished? I don't understand why it is that when we pray for the sick, not all sickness is healed. Or why it is that all depression and addictions are not broken. I don't understand why this coronavirus has not yet been lifted. But I'm confident. I am resolute. And my faith in my wonderful Saviour Jesus will not be shaken. Because he has paid it all. He has completed it all. When his precious blood was spilled on that cruel cross, it was and is enough to cover every sin, to heal every disease, and to mend every broken heart. Here now or in eternity. And so I will give my life to follow this lovely Saviour Jesus and to tell and to show others the wonders of this gospel message. It is finished. Hallelujah.
What a saviour. Oh, they had just been reading the words of that lovely old hymn, Man of Sorrows. Man of Sorrows, what a name for the Son of God who came, ruined sinners to reclaim. Hallelujah, what a saviour. Mocked by insults, harsh and crude, in my place condemned he stood, Sealed my pardon with his blood. Hallelujah. What a saviour. Guilty, vile and helpless we. Spotless Lamb of God was he. Full atonement. Can it be? Hallelujah. What a saviour. Lifted up was he to die. It is finished was his cry now in heaven exalted high hallelujah what a saviour when he comes our glorious king all his ransomed home to bring then anew the song will sing hallelujah what a saviour may God bless each one of us this Easter time. Amen. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, I thank you that you died on the cross for our sin. You suffered and died so that we might be free. Tonight, Lord, I pray for any who do not know uh, Jesus as their Lord and Saviour. Maybe you would pray along with me, Lord Jesus Christ, I confess tonight that I need you. I need you to come and forgive my sin. I need you to come and give me new life. I realise that you gave your life for me. You suffered in that cruel cross so that I might live so that I might be forgiven, so that I might be set free. Tonight, I accept your gift. Thank you for forgiving me. Thank you for giving me new life through your Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, come and fill me now. Forgive all of my past sins set me free to live a life of love fill me with the love of Jesus and help me to serve him and to live for him all the days of my life Amen Lord we pray for all those struggling at the present time with addictions with burdens for those who are sick and those who are suffering. Lord, the cross paid for it all. It was sufficient. Uh, it was enough, Lord, to cover every one of our burdens. So we bring all before you now in Jesus' name. Lord, we continue to pray for those in our health services. We pray for all those carrying out essential work at this time, that you would be with them, that you would protect them and their families, that you would deliver them at this time of need. Lord, we pray for all those who are sick, especially all those suffering due to this coronavirus. Lord, we pray your mercy upon them. We pray your mighty healing hand. Lord, that you would lift this virus from our land and deliver us, deliver this world at this time. And Holy Spirit, come and refresh each one of us. Come and refresh your church. Come and turn us to look again to Jesus, to gaze on the wonder of his cross, to fall in love once again with our beautiful Saviour, and to be filled with a passion and a desire to share this wonderful good news with the world around us. 
In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen.